Hi, I'm Amy Romeo of Amy Romeo Crafts, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make and personalize this really pretty gingerbread house ornament for your Christmas tree. We'll be using faux leather, heat transfer vinyl, and a Cricut. So if you're ready to learn how to make this project, let's go ahead and get started. The SVG file for this project is available in my shop. It's part of my holiday faux leather crafting event where I'm sharing a brand new holiday SVG and video tutorial every day for 20 days. I'll leave a link on the screen for you so you can get the SVG or you can visit amyromeo.com holiday to see all of the event's designs. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make this gingerbread house ornament. I'll be using the Cricut Maker today, but you could use any of the current Cricut machines because we'll be using the standard fine point blade to cut the faux leather for this project. So this project is made up of two basic materials, faux leather for the bottom layer or the base of the ornament, and then we'll be applying some heat transfer vinyl decoration to the top. If you didn't want to use faux leather, you could use cardstock. And if you didn't want to use heat transfer vinyl, you could also do this project with permanent vinyl. So the faux leather that I'm using, this one happens to be from Amazon. It comes on a roll. I really like this brown gingerbread color, but there is also lots of other brown faux leathers that come on sheets or in rolls. And I'll link to some of my favorite gingerbread brown colors for you. The heat transfer vinyl that I'm using is a combination of some solid heat transfer vinyl and some glitter. The choice is yours. And then to apply the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using my Easy Press Mini set on the low setting. You could also use a regular Easy Press. I recommend setting it to about 265 degrees. To press the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using my heat pressing pad and a small cover sheet. This is a Teflon sheet that I've trimmed down to size. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. To cut the faux leather, I'll be using the purple strong grip cutting mat and to cut the heat transfer vinyl, I'll use the green standard grip cutting mat. If you're using the Cricut Joy for this project, then you can use the green Joy size mat that comes with your machine. You may need to resize your project down a little bit to fit the Joy. Some other materials and tools I'll be using, some blue painter's tape to help me get good cuts, some scissors, I like having craft scissors, and then also some detail scissors like these four inch curved scissors. These are great for trimming up any little fuzzies on the edge of the faux leather. Then you'll need a weeding tool. You could use a hook or a pin pen style. And then to assemble our ornament, we'll be gluing the front and back faux leather layers together. I'll be using some Fabri-Tac. You could use any good fabric glue or craft glue, like barely art glue. And I'll be showing you a really cool trick to help get your ornament nice and flat and well sealed so it looks pretty when it's hanging on your tree. Finally, we'll need some craft ribbon to tie up the ornament and create the little hanger. This is a 3 8 inch craft ribbon. I got this at Michael's. You can use any kind of ribbon you'd like. So let's go ahead and hop into Design Space and we'll get started cutting out our mats and then we'll assemble our ornament. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and then Upload Image and you'll browse to where the unzipped SVG file is for this project. Click on it to select it and then click open. And you'll see the front and the back of the gingerbread house ornament here. Click on upload. And that will bring it here into your recent uploads row. And then click on add to canvas. So here we can see the gingerbread house ornament is made up of some very basic layers. The brown layers are the layers that we'll cut from faux leather or cardstock if that's what you're using. There's a front and a back layer. And remember I said we'll be gluing those layers together after we apply all of our heat transfer vinyl layers. So then we have a white layer for all of the gingerbread house ornaments. We have a little bit of green heat transfer vinyl and a little bit of red. So I've created this white space down here at the bottom so you can add some personalized text if you'd like with your family name or the year or our first home or whatever you'd like to personalize your ornament with. So let me just show you how to do that. You can add some text in Cricut Design Space by clicking on the text tool, and then some default text will pop up. I'm just gonna type the year 2023, and you could leave it, you could leave it here with the 2023 in the default Cricut Sans font, or you could choose a different font, either here where if you have Cricut Access, you'll see your Cricut fonts you've purchased, or on system, you'll be able to see all the fonts that you have on your device. So I'm gonna pick one here that I have on my device, and that changed our font here. Now all I want to do is drag it up here to my little snowbank 
and I'm going to drag it a little smaller. Let's see, maybe a little smaller than that. And I think I'll cut it from red, the same red that's up here. So let me change the color. So up here where it says material colors, this will show me all the colors currently in use in my project. So I'll click on this red. So now that I've made this red, Cricut Design Space will put this red layer on the same red vinyl mat, and that way I can cut the text out of the same material I used to cut all the other red elements in this design. So that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and click the Make It button. I'm cutting my materials on a mat. And the first thing I want to do is mirror each of my mats because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut in reverse. If you're using permanent vinyl for this project, then you would only mirror the faux leather mat and not permanent vinyl mats. Okay, so here we can see our year is reversed, which is correct because it's text. And what I like to do is go through each of my mats and just pull my shapes away from the edge of my mat and away from each other if there's multiple shapes. This just helps when weeding out our vinyl layers and then heat applying them. So I'll click back here on my faux leather layer and it looks like I need to cut a piece of faux leather that is about nine inches wide and seven inches tall to cut both of these shapes out completely. Then when it's time to cut my vinyl mats, I'll return to Design Space and I'll cut them using the recommended cut settings for that particular material. So let me show you what I mean. Let's click Continue. The faux leather setting I'll be using is the faux leather paper thin setting. If you don't have this setting bookmarked as a favorite like I do, you can click on Browse All Materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search and find this setting. So faux leather paper thin, and you always want to choose more pressure. That's gonna help you get a good cut. And this is just a reminder that we're using the regular fine point blade. You don't need a special blade to cut faux leather with your Cricut. This layer is white vinyl, and I'll be cutting that from the vinyl setting with default pressure as well as this green mat because it's just regular heat transfer vinyl. For the red glitter mat, I'll be using some Caesar glitter heat transfer vinyl and it's a little thicker. So I'll use the glitter vinyl setting with default pressure and I will repeat the cut one time. Okay, so let's click back on our faux leather mat. Make sure we have our faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure ready to go. And now let's hop back over to my overhead camera and we'll start to cut out our mats and then I'll show you how to put together the ornament. So I've already trimmed my faux leather down to that size I noted in the matte preview screen, and I'm going to place it pretty side down on my purple strong grip cutting mat. I'm gonna press it down all over with my hands. If you have a brayer, you can roll it down as well. And then I'm going to put, use some blue painter's tape and tape around on all sides. And what the blue painter's tape does is it helps us keep the material on the mat firmly without moving, and that's gonna help us get a much better cut. Now that my faux leather's down on the mat securely, we already have our faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure set to go. So we'll just load the mat into the Cricut and begin the cut. Now that the cut is complete, I wanna check the cut before I unload the mat. So I'm gonna use my sharp weeding tool and then just kind of pick down here at a corner and see if the cut went all the way through. And that looks really good, but if it didn't, you can always repeat the cut as many times as needed as long as you haven't unloaded your mat. So if I wanted to rerun this cut, I could just press the cut button on my larger machines like the Maker or the Explore. And if you're using the Cricut Joy, the option to rerun the cut will be on your screen in Design Space. But these shapes look good, so we'll go ahead and unload the mat. and I'll remove my little house shapes. Here's the front, and remember to pop out that little hole. Here's the back. Then we'll just set those aside, and I'm going to return to Design Space and cut out and weed all of my vinyl layers, and then we'll move on to the next step.
Okay, so now that I have cut and weeded all of my vinyl layers, we're ready to start pressing. So I have my Easy Press Mini set to the low setting, which is just that first green line. I have my heat pressing pad and my little cover sheet, and we're going to find the bottom layer of the front of the ornament. And that's pretty easy because we're looking for the chimney, and the chimney is on this side, on the right side. So this is our bottom layer. Remember if you see any little fuzzies on your faux leather, like there, I see one there, you can just use those curved scissors or embroidery scissors and just trim those edges. So I have my faux leather layer ready to go. And the first layer we're going to press is the white icing layer. And then we'll, this will tell us all of the places to put our remaining layers. So pretty easy, we're just gonna line up the bottom of the ornament and then we'll place this down so that the top lines up too. And you can use that little cutout hole at the top as well to line up when you, once you have that hole lined up and then this bottom row lined up, everything else should fall into place. So now what I'm going to do is cover with my little cover sheet and press. I want to get 10 seconds of pressing all over the whole ornament. So if you're using a regular easy press, again, set to 265 degrees. You'll just press it down. With the Easy Press Mini, it's gonna take me a little longer. So I'll go ahead and press through that and then we'll peel off. Okay, so I'm going to start to carefully peel back my clear cover sheet. You wanna keep the faux leather flat on your mat if you can and just start to peel very slowly. And as you're peeling, watch for any vinyl that might lift up. If it does lift up, you can just press down that cover sheet. See, there's one right there. You can just press down your cover sheet and press again. Okay, so we'll try again. Remember to keep that faux leather nice and flat and then just carefully and slowly peel back your clear cover sheet. So these two little guys down here are peeling up a little bit, so I'm just gonna press those down. That's one reason I really like using the Easy Press Mini rather than a large heat press is I can sort of get in those little spot areas. There we go, that looks good. Now what we'll do is we will add our little green wreath. And since the wreath matches up to the wreath decorations and these little peppermints, I think what I'm going to do first is just sort of fit this layer onto the back of the red layer like that. Then I'm gonna use this red layer to line up where my green layer needs to be. There we go. I'll press that, keep that green layer pressed down. See how I'm doing that? Peel away the red layer because we're not ready to press that yet. But now I know that that's where my green layer goes. I'll cover and press again. There we go. And now we can use that red layer again. Line up the peppermints. And when we do that, the wreath decoration should also line up as well. If it doesn't, if any of these small parts are not lining up, feel free to use some small scissors and just trim that shape out of the clear cover layer and place it individually. That's no problem. There we go. And now our last layer will be our 2023 year or whatever personalized text you created. So what I'm trying to do is just sort of eyeball this. I know that the door, the line of the door is sort of the center of the ornament. So I'm trying to line up the center of the 2023 with the center of the door. Making sure it's straight, that looks good. And we'll do our final cover and press. And that looks really cute. So I'm going to cover it one more time with my little cover sheet. 
Now that the vinyl cover sheet is removed, just press all over. This also helps warm up the top of the faux leather again so that we can press it underneath my little pressing pad here for just a minute to let it cool nice and flat. There we go. While we're doing that, we'll get our glue ready. And I mentioned that I have a cool trick for making sure our ornament is sealed on the edges really nicely and our ornament is nice and flat after we glue it. And that trick is to use a heavy book. After we glue our ornament, we're going to let our glued faux leather pieces dry nice and flat underneath our heavy book. So that looks good. So what we'll do is just flip over our two halves of our faux leather ornament and I'm going to apply this glue to the back of only one half. And I wanna get close to the edge, but not all the way to the edge, because as we press this little faux leather glued sandwich underneath our book, the glue will seep to the edges, which is exactly what we want. So once you have your glue all over the back, now I'm just going to lift up the front and place it on the back shape. And I'll spend just a minute sort of lining up those shapes and making sure that the edges are neatly lined up. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Now we'll just place this underneath our book. If any of the glue is seeping out of the edges, use a little damp paper towel or your finger just to wipe up the glue at the edges. I like to check in about 10 minutes, see if there's any glue on the edge, see if I need to adjust my shape at all while it's gluing, and then we'll let it dry for an hour. So my ornament's been drying for about an hour, and I did check it after a few minutes just to look for any glue on the edges, but it looked pretty good at that time, and I think it looks great now. So if you wanted to tie a little ribbon to the top, I like this 3 8 inch ribbon. You could go thinner, like a 1 8 inch if you wanted to. And there's a couple different ways you could do this. You can just cut a piece, you know, thread it through your loop here and tie a little knot at the top. You could go a little bigger, thread your string through, give yourself more room and then tie a ribbon up here. Or there's a cool way that I've been doing them that I saw on Facebook, which I love. So you're gonna wanna take a piece of ribbon about 24 inches. Give yourself, you know, a little bit of room. And then fold it in half. So you have a loop up top and then the two ends here. And then what you wanna do is thread the ends from the back to the front through the hole and you wanna pull and leave about four inches at the top. And that's gonna create your little ornament hanger. See that, how it makes the little loop? I like it kind of that size. Now you have your two tails here in the front and all you're gonna do is tie, tie a bow. So I'm gonna first tie a little knot here. And you'll wanna take your time as you do this to get a nice pretty bow. And I know so many of you are much craftier than I am in the bow department. So I'm sure you'll have a nice bow idea. I'm just gonna do a basic bow here. There we go. And then I'll use my scissors and just trim up these little pointy edges here. Anyway, so that's my new favorite way of tying a ornament hanger onto a faux leather ornament. So this is our gingerbread ornament, all complete with our personalization at the bottom. I hope you like this one. I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you wanna see all of the fun and festive faux leather crafts I created for my holiday crafting event, I'll leave a link to a playlist for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.